Okay, so we have an example for centripetal motion. It says, an aerobatic airplane pilot experiences weightlessness as she passes over the top of a loop-de-loop -loop maneuver. The acceleration of gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. If her speed is 290 meters per second at this time, find the radius of the loop. Answer in units of kilometers. Because of my artistic abilities or lack thereof, I, instead of drawing, I just got this picture from the internet. And although the trajectory is not a perfect circle, we're going to model the motion as a perfect circle. That's, what I, that's why I drew the circle over here. It's always a good choice to try to identify the radius, I mean, not the radius. Well, we need to find the radius, but the center. Yeah, I think that's more or less it. And let's write down what we know, our given. We know the acceleration of gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. We know the velocity, 290 meters per second. And that velocity, I'm hoping you identify the fact that is going to be tangential to the circle. That is tangential velocity. So if we look at this point or any point in the circle, because this is uniform circular motion, that 290 meter speed will have a different direction every time, but it'll be tangent to the circle. Something like this. I know it's not to scale, right? My, my vectors are look different, but they're supposed to be the same. One thing to remember about the tangential velocity is that is perpendicular to the radius. This is radius r is what we're trying to find. So that's the tangential velocity v at this point. Okay, so what do we do now? Because we need to find the radius. We are working with centripetal motion, that is centripetal force. Any and every time we have forces, we have to draw a free body diagram. And that's why I have it twice, so I can use this one for the free body diagram. So I'm going to ignore the fact that she is weightless, well she feels weightless, to make my point. At location B, the person has mass, and she will experience the gravitational field of Earth. That means she has weight. It's called this mg. And it's pointing down, of course. Now, she is sitting on a seat. Whenever you sit on something, you have your weight pointing down. And then there is a reactive force upward, which we call the normal force. In this case, well, she's upside down, so the normal force would be against the seat, which is to say it would point also down normal force. Then I want you to see that these two forces are pointing inward toward the center. That means these two forces get the label of centripetal force. The example thus far for, for the class have shown only one force labeled as centripetal force. But in this case, it's two of them, at least for now. So then we can say, all right, then the centripetal force is normal plus the weight. I'm going to assume down is negative, I mean down is positive because we only have vectors going down for, for the forces. So centripetal force is equal to normal force plus the weight of the pilot. Okay, now let's consider the fact that she feels weightless. Maybe if you think of times where you've been on a roller coaster and you do a loop-the-loop, -loop, at the top maybe you felt like you were lifted off your seat for a very short period of time. Maybe you felt weightless, like you were floating. And that's because the normal force, when you feel that, when you feel weightless, is equal to zero. 
That's the condition to feel weightless. The normal force has to be equal to zero. Let's write it down. So weightlessness for this case, or roller coaster, is felt when normal force is zero, that is, centripetal force and weight are equal. That means, at this point, for the free body diagram, we have to get rid of the normal force because she feels weightless. And our formula, well, this equation will be built over here, will simplify rather nicely. Centripetal force is equal to the weight. And now we have to think, all right, what do we do? We were given three different formulas for centripetal force. Which one do we pick? We have velocity, we need to find radius. That means we can use, we should use the one that has those two variables. And that one defines the centripetal force as the mass multiplied times the velocity squared divided by the radius. And this velocity is tangential velocity. Now we'll set these two equal to each other, the right sides. We can cancel the mass. And solving for radius is simple. We multiply times radius to not have it our, as the denominator. And then we'll just divide by acceleration of gravity. Now we just plug in our numbers. Don't forget to square the velocity. Normally I would include a second term over here to convert my meters to kilometers, but I don't want you to be confused. So I'm going to do, it, do this in a, a, a two-step process. Let's plug this in into the calculator. So we have this radius in meters, 8,581.6 meters. And to find kilometers, I just divide by 1,000. That is, I move the decimal point three places to the left. And there you have it, 8.58 kilometers. I know I am not being, not careful, but very strict with significant figures, but that's okay.